Sports Central. Happy Thursday. Adam Deal along with Charles Ashley the third. Glad you could join us. Hoop season about to get into district play. This is the last tune-up week, if you will, yeah. for all teams. Um, look, we had, a, we had a matchup that we talked about, Charles, at the beginning of this week, and it was Hope Christian of Volcano Vista. Hope Christian, not really the tournament that they're used to in the APS Metro Tournament, didn't do too well. Volcano Vista loses early, but then rips off three straight. They were 10-3 and three going into this matchup at Hope Christian. Yeah, we were all anxious to see what type of Volcano team uh, was going to show up against a Hope team that was angry. You know they're angry. They're not used, used to losing this much this often. So Volcano, softer schedule, going to play a team that's a perennial powerhouse in their class, what's going to happen? Well, let's go check it out. The highlights from Hope Christian as the Husky <laughs> Hawks, the 10-3 and three Hawks, Charles. Kind three. of flying under the radar as Diedrich Milford will step back. That's a three-pointer look. When he's hot, he's hot. You like yeah, to but, see him drive a little bit more, too, That's always been your problem right? with him, Adam. Get that out. <laughs> nice block there. Says Kosurik. Huskies really pushing the pace right there, and your guy getting up. When, you're right. When was the last time we had a Hope Christian team that had that Stole many athletes out dunks? there? Dunks Get out of his people. way. Marcus <laughs> Johnson will drive the lane. That's a bucket. So you see Hope Christian on top early 21-18. That's a scoop up and under by McNeely. Oh, a little behind the back action right what there. What you need, Call says Milford. <laughs> Block. Foul. Uh, Hope Christian. Maybe Milford starting out slow. Milford steps back with a three, but a little bit more athletic than you're used to seeing. Am I right? A lot more athletic, but you know, with Coach Murphy, he always has his guys in great shape. They're going to pressure the ball. They like to get out there and run when they can. And they're tough, tough team. Nice shot right there. I think Malita's McNeely with a nice stroke. So here's a little finger roll by Kosurik, who steps inside the lane. It's 41 29. Hope pulling away. Look at this behind the back. Milford off the window and in Kosurik. And it's Hope Christian, no problem. 57 46 over the Hawks. Let's check out what Murphy had to say. I thought their inside game was really hurting us, but you know, our kids uh, tried to battle and then got back in it and made a couple big shots. I thought we uh, switched to our man defense and it seemed to get us, uh, get us going again. Yeah, he got a little blood on it and uh, changed his number, maybe get a little hotter. But uh, he's, a, he's a great shooter, so is Diedrich. Uh, you know, I thought it was a well, well played game on both parts. I thought Medina, our little sophomore guard, did a good job controlling the tempo and, and he played good defense on Beal, one of their best players uh, in the state. Uh, Beal's a great guard and I thought our Medina did a good job on him. Yeah, I think we played a great schedule. Uh, you know, the games we lost, the Rio Rancho is a really strong team. And, we lost the last game by two, and Albuquerque High only had the one loss. So, you know, we, we have nothing to hang our head on. But, uh, you know, at the same time, uh, hopefully, uh, like I said, this will get us ready for district. Uh, we have our tournament coming up this week, and uh, there's some exciting teams coming to that. But, you know, we have one more big school left, but we have Clovis on the road, and the rest will be uh, the 4A schools that we'll be playing. Well, people don't understand, uh, yeah, this little gym is like a cracker box, but, you know, people from Shiprock and Las Lunas and uh, West Las Vegas, Taos, uh, they're going to pack this place, and it's going to be exciting. Uh, it's not real comfortable probably for fans, but it's a it's a great atmosphere to coach in and for the kids to play in. Well, you know, we, we just gotta you know we just gotta be well prepared. You know, we uh, we gotta keep improving in our game. We gotta work on our inside game and and develop a little bit better on our defensive end. But uh, we you know we gotta learn a little bit about our opponents too and find out what the St. Mike's and the Sandia Preps and the Indian schools and the, some of those teams that'll be in our district as we get ready for district play. That is coach talk right there. <laughs> Somebody, he's, the, he's the king at giving you the coach answer. Coach Murphy, a little horse always after a game, by the somebody way. Somebody get Coach Murphy some chamomile tea <laughs> and work this out. This is how he always sounds I know, just just after the end man, of the game. Man, it's cold. But, hey. Good bounce back great, win for Hope win Christian, for right? Great win for them. They were struggling a little bit. You'll take whatever win you can get early on in the season so you can build up that resume, set yourself up in a good position going into district play, hopefully win your district and get a good seating. So that's a good win for them. No, it is a good win, and, and now you wonder where Volcano Vista stands mm -hmm. because we haven't seen them get a huge win so far this season. Um, they have a couple shaky losses, but their record was good. Yeah. And I think, I think every coach will tell you is, is in the APS Metro Tournament, if you could win three games no matter how you do it, that's a win. <laughs> so they lose their opening round game, maybe a softer schedule through – the rest of the APS tournament, but they win three games in the APS tournament. So going into this game, they're ten and three, but slip up to ten and four. I cannot get a read on Volcano Vista. We can't this get a read on them right now, <clears throat> but you know what's going to help us? They have a just a ridiculous road swing this weekend, where they're going to go down and play Carlsbad, 
and they're going to play Hobbs. And we'll see exactly where this team is at this weekend. All right, Charles, I really quickly want to preview Real Rancho yes. versus Real Grand tonight. We're going to have it here on U Sports Network, also ProVenetworks.com. Richard Tripp's going to have the call. Real Rancho flying high right now. They've won 10 of their last mm -hmm. 11. They took third in the APS Metro Tournament. Real Grand, the exact opposite. They took a complete dive, a seventh seed going into the Metro Tournament, and they've lost a ton of games now. So what do you think? Real Grand, Real Rancho. Real Grand, Real Rancho. Real Rancho, as you mentioned, playing lights out right now. They slipped up a little bit against Cibola, bounced back with a good win over Trisco. But then you have a Ravens team uh, getting a lot of early wins, people starting to jump on a bandwagon, believing, wow, this they might be legit. They lose a couple guys for whatever issues. I don't know if it's academic or discipline or whatever the case. And they went on a little skid. They're seven to six coming into this game. We don't know who's going to play. That's been a problem. We, we never know what Raven team is going to be on the court. I just don't think they have enough to compete with this real Rancho team who's they're going to run the ball the entire game. They're going to press you. They're going to get after you. They're going to swipe. They're going to do whatever it takes to get the ball because they're a smaller team. Real Grand is a bigger team than them, but I don't see them being able to make as many shots as the Rams. When you look at the Rams, Charles, and, and when they're hot, they're on. Okay, when they're shooting, they're on, and I think Coach Ortega will know that. He'll, he'll come on here in just a minute and talk about that, how hot they were in the pit. But when they're not on, things like Siebel, I mean, Siebel completely controlled the pace of that game, were able to beat their trap and kind of get easy buckets. And on the other end, Real Ranchos, Juan Hurt, Brady Patterson, they couldn't hit the deep ball, and so then it affects them. Well, I look at it also as a, a reflection of your the discipline that comes from the coaching staff. Coach Rodriguez is very disciplined. He's going to get his guys. They buy into what he's doing. The Ravens, they were winning earlier. They were buying into what Coach Jimenez was telling them. Now when you hit a skid, can you stay disciplined against a real Rancho team that's going to force you to run? Let's and hear your projection. Goal. i got to go it? with the Rams. I think the Rams are going to make the Ravens run a lot. It's going to be an 82 68 type of game. I'll go 81-66. I agree. I think Real Rancho in all but one game this year has scored mm -hmm. in the 70s. Yes. I think they have no problem with the Real Grand Ravens tonight. Remember, that's going to be right here on U Sports Network. It's a 7 o'clock tip-off time. We'll have pregame for you at 6.50. Richard Tripp will have the call. Always does a great job, Richard Tripp. Yeah, we love Richard, and he does a great job helping out with the NMO TSC polls or whatnot, him and Manny. So Richard is a man everywhere. He's up there in West Las Vegas, Man of many hats, Richard. That's your guy. <laughs> that is, that is my guy, Richard. All right, come on back here in just a moment. Now we're gonna have Adrian Ortega. We'll talk a little of Trisco Heritage Hoops right here on U Sports Central.